This is part 19 of JavaScript tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss arrays in JavaScript. Arrays are collections and are zero indexed. This means the first element is present at index position zero and the last element is present at index position array object dot length minus one. Length property of the array object returns the size of the array. Let's look at few examples. Notice in example one, we have square brackets after the equal to symbol. This square brackets indicates that this variable empty array is an array object. Since we don't have any elements within this array, length property is going to return zero. Let's quickly look at this in action. I have this exact same code already typed within Visual Studio. So when we run this, we should get zero as the output. There we go. There are several ways to create an array. In this example one, we're using the square bracket syntax to create the array. In example two, notice that we are using the array constructor to create an array. And to the constructor, we are passing number 10. So in this case, we are instructing to create an array with size 10. So calling length property on this my array object returns 10. Let's look at this in action. So instead of using this square bracket syntax to create an array, I'm going to use array constructor and to it let's pass 10. So in this case this empty array object will have size of 10. So length property should return 10. There we go. Now let's see how to retrieve the first and last elements from the array using the array index. Let's name this array my array and let's use square bracket syntax to create the array and I want this array to include three elements that is 10, 20 and 30. Now arrays are zero indexed meaning the first element is at index position zero, second element is at index position one and third element is at index position 2. So in this case, the first element is at index position 0 and the last element is at index position 2. And the length of this array is 3. So we can say that the last element within this array is present at 3 minus 1, that is index position 2. That is the length of the array minus 1. So let's see how to retrieve the first and last element. Let's actually write those elements to the document object using the write method of the document object. So what we want to do is print this literal text first element and then to this we want to append whatever is the first element within that my array object. So we want to retrieve the element that is present at index position 0 and then let's append HTML break. Now we also want the last element. So last element equals my array of index position two. So at index position two, we have number 30. Now in this case, we are hard coding the index position of the last element. We can either do that or we can use the length property of the array object and then subtract one from that because length property is going to return 3, 3 minus 1 is 2, and at my array of 2, we have the last element. So let's run this and see if we get the first element and last element. First element should be 10, last element should be 30. Now let's see different ways of populating an array in JavaScript. First, let's look at you know declaring an array first and then populating it using the array index. So here notice that we are first creating this my array and within the square brackets we don't have any elements. So technically this array is an empty array. And then we are using the index position of the array to populate it with values. So at index position 0 we have number 10, index position 1 we have 20 and index position 2 we have 30 and finally we are passing that array to this alert method. So we get this output 10 comma 20 comma 30. So let's quickly look at this in action. So where my array we want to create an empty array first and then we want to use the index positions to initialize it. So my array of 0 
10. So at index position 0, we want to store 10. And at index position 1, we want to store 20. And at index position 2, we want to store 30. Finally, let's pass this array object to alert function. And when we run this, we should get 10, 20, 30. That is the contents of that array. So in this case, we are first declaring an array. And then we are using the index positions to populate it. We can also declare and populate the array at the same time. So here, I can directly pass 10, 20, 30 to this array object. So in this case, we are declaring and populating at the same time. Now when we run this, we get the same output, that is 10, 20, 30. There we go. So in both of these examples, we're using the square bracket syntax to create and populate the array. Now, another way is to use the array constructor itself. So here, we're using the array constructor and passing 3. So here, we are creating an array with size 3. And again, we are using the index positions to populate it with values. And we are passing that array to the alert function. So let's look at that in action. So instead of using the square bracket syntax, um, let's use the array constructor. So new array. And this 3 is going to instruct to create an array with size 3. And then my array of 0 equals 10. My array of 1 equals 20. And my array of 2 equals 30. And finally, we are passing my array to the alert function. So we should get 10, 20, 30. So if we are using the array constructor here. Now again, when we use the array constructor, we can either first declare the array and then populate that array with values using the index positions. Or we can declare and populate it in a single line like this. So 10, 20, 30. So in this case, it's going to automatically create an array with size 3 and populate it with these three values, 10, 20, 30. So when we run this, we should still get the same output, 10, 20, 30. An important point to keep in mind here is that when we pass a single numeric value to the array constructor, in that case, we are instructing it to create an array with that size. So here we are passing 3. So here we're instructing to create an array with size 3. Now, if we pass more than one number, then the constructor is automatically going to assume those are the values um, you know, to be present within the array. So if you pass a single value, then that will be used to construct an array with that as the size. If you pass more than one number, then those will be used as elements within the array. Now let's see how to populate an array using a for loop. So if you look at the example right here, we have a variable even numbers array. And this is an array object because we have that square brackets after the equal to symbol. And notice that here we are using a for loop. Arrays are 0 indexed. So we are starting from 0, going till 5. And then notice what we are doing within the body of the for loop. So i first will be 0. So 0 equals 0 into 2. So at index position 0, we will have 0. And at index position 1, we will have 1 into 2, that is 2. And at index position 2, we will have 4. So we are multiplying the value of i by 2 every time and storing that within the ith index position. And then finally, we are passing that even numbers array to the alert function. So we should get even numbers from 0 to 10. Let's look at this in action. So let's call this my even numbers array. And then let's use a for loop. So for var i 
equals 0 because the array index starts at 0 i less than or equal to 5 i plus plus my even numbers array of i equals i into 2 and then finally to the alert function let's pass my even numbers array so when we run this we should get even numbers starting from 0 till 10 so in this case we are just using the for loop to populate the array now let's see how we can use for loop to retrieve elements that are present within the array so for where i is equal to 0 i less than my even numbers array dot length i plus plus let's actually write the value of the array I mean the value that is present at each index position within the array to the document object so my even numbers array of i and to that let's append HTML break so that we get each number on a separate line so first i value will be 0 so my even numbers of 0 will return the value that is present at index position 0 and then you know it's going to increment the value by 1 so at index position 1 we have 2 4 6 8 and 10 so when we run this we should get numbers 0 till 10 Thank you for listening and have a great day.